now staying with two guests who join me live in the studio. Now, Macon Borero is a UK-based charity that focuses on relieving poverty through education. Every year, the foundation provides scholarships to ch children from Zimbabwe to allow them to attend the best schools in Harare and supplies them with food, clothing, amenities in order to help them continue their studies. Their incredible work has helped children to escape poverty and become future engineers, doctors and business leaders. And I'm delighted to say I'm joined in the studio by two of the board members now. Nicola Baldwin and Tanatsa Namambi. Yes. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. Um, Nicola, well, both of you have been bought, born and bred within Zimbabwe, but Nicola, we'll start with you. Um, you moved over here. Why did you want to get involved in this project? Um, well, I know the founders, Mark and Laura. They're old friends of mine, and I just thought that what they were doing was so inspirational um, that it, it was something that I, I was desperate to get involved in. Um. Tanatsa, um, Zimbabwe has 90% unemployment. More than a third of the children don't ever complete their education. Um, it's quite a, quite a strict vetting process that you both carry out in terms of going into schools in townships um, and then sort of getting children to apply and then whittling it down to the select few. Uh, it must be incredibly difficult to do that. It is. Um, basically, we have extremely intelligent kids applying to these programs. And then you've got the emotional aspect in terms of we know these kids have a need, but we have to whittle it down to the few that we can actually educate because we'd rather not stretch ourselves too thin and focus on a few and give them quality education. So you, you go from, as I understand, I've been reading your, your blogs, um, <laughs> you, you, you get something like 500 applications yes. and then through a series of different vetting processes you get down to just a mere handful yes yeah that's correct we we try to pick kids who are bright in academically um, but who can also make the jump from a, a local um, school to one of the top three schools in Harare um, and and have the most need um, so it's it's kind of a combination of those three criteria that we use to choose our select our students. And it's not just scholarships that you provide; you also give um, money to help funding uh, school fees for kids as well. Yes. Yeah, so um, of the we only have eight scholarship places available, um, but obviously way more than that needy kids. Um, so there are further um, eight or so that we pay their school fees in their existing schools. And what sort of um, money are we talking about when you're, when you're giving a scholarship? Um, how much money is needed to take a child all the way through their education and from what age? Well, when we're, the ones that we provide scholarships for are the private schools in Zimbabwe, and we're looking at about a thousand US a month. And that is, that is top quality education. And then when you look at the additional ones where we provide education in their local schools, we're looking at a couple of hundred at, a month at the, at the least. Mm. And what age do these kids start going to these schools? So how long is that funding? Does it, does it last for? We focus on the A-level years because we have a big problem with regards to a lot of children drop out of school after GCSE, O-level, so we focus solely on A-level, which is why, two years. Why is that? Is that culturally because they're expected to help with the mum and dad in bringing up their siblings or working the land or yes. doing other things? Mm. You've got the economic and social issues where we have, um, it, it's, fe it's not financially feasible for them to continue onto the additional two years. And then you have the social aspects where you have, for instance, girls start to think about getting married and then you've got guys who need to help out their families. Mm. Do you think the government in Zimbabwe does enough to focus on um, education? Is there or are they are they sort of more sort of looking at the economic aspects of, of the country rather than um, thinking in the wider picture that uh, education is actually all tied in? I think um, education is a key um, aspect for the Zimbabwean government, but then, as with anything else in the country, the finances is the biggest issue. Yeah. We don't have the option to provide free schooling, so it's a matter of how far can the resources the government have available be stretched. Mm. Yeah. And how do you go about, because this is all through funding, isn't it? So how do Absolutely. you go about fundraising? Um, we have um, some regular donors, um, and then we try and fundraise through events um, so there is a, a concert on tomorrow evening which um, Macomberera has sponsored and, and we'll be fundraising there. We're looking for people to take part in the London 10k race um, for us and also the London triathlon. So um, big events like that is, is one of our best um, sources of fundraising. Um, 
can you tell me a bit more about the, the kids themselves? So, so what, what sort of stories do you hear about in terms of like hardship, overcoming adversity, and then coming out the other end? Do you have any examples you can share with us? Wow, well, the, the two scholarships, maybe, yeah. Yeah, um, we've just um, just had two of our kids have won scholarships um, to university in America. Um, kids come from desperately poor backgrounds. Um, one of our first intake was a, a lad by the name of Peter, and he used to walk 13 miles each way to school just for the, the privilege of getting an education. Um, we've had other kids, um, there, there's one guy who's currently at un university in America, his father cuts grass on the side of the road for a living and his son is now at one of the top universities in America. So there's some hugely inspirational stories that Absolutely. come from our children. Do you think um, the, the model that you have is something that, that could be rolled out in other African countries? Because obviously it was founded by um, two people who are were, I don't think Nick, I don't think they were born in Zimbabwe. Were they, they were, they were yes, born in yeah. Zimbabwe. Yes. That, um, they were. Do you think that that could be rolled out in other African countries? Because you do need to have a, um, you know, a a lot of backing or b be very wealthy yourselves. Mm. And the passion has been the biggest driver for us. But I think um, this is. I think well, obviously the reason I'm involved is because I I think you need to specify and actually focus on a few individuals who you can actually help grow, as opposed to stretching. Let's say you get ten pounds, stretching that across ten people. I'd rather take ten pounds and focus on one individual who can change their family and their community. Mm -hmm. So I think it's actually having an, a, a, thing, a massive impact on the communities and we can actually see the tangible results. Of Have that. you been met with any criticism as a result of just being quite selective like that? Not, no. not to date, no. 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 What's next for your, your charity? Well, we've just launched a new project which um, involves a mobile science lab. Um, a lot of the, um, the high density in the rural schools, they don't have the resources to have science lab facilities at their schools. So the kids are writing their GCSE exams without ever having touched any um, science equipment. So we are currently fundraising to um, buy and uh, convert a, a shipping container into a science lab that we can then move from school to school um, so that we try and, and give as many kids as possible the opportunity to at least have some hands-on experience with science equipment before they get to their exams and that will give them a much better chance of passing. Okay and if you want to make donations where can they do that? Um, best place is macomboro.info, which yeah, spell is... It, spell it out loud. Sorry. <laughs> M-A-K-O-M-B-O-R-E-O um, -E dot info. That's our website. And we have a link to our uh, Just Giving website, which we have a pedometer which shows you pretty much where we are with regards to reaching mm. our target. Okay, Tanata and Nicola, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you Wonderful. for having us. Thank you.